Hey, hey, friends. Welcome back or welcome if you are new. I'm, my name is Sammy and welcome to this week's What's for Dinner. Um, I can't remember how many recipes. Five? Maybe five? Yeah, I think I have five recipes <laughs> for you this week and they're pretty much my go-tos um, and our family favorites as far as comfort foods, I should say. So I was really excited to kind of bring this to you all so you can kind of see what we, as if you don't already know, <laughs> but these are some foods that we usually or typically have in a week, um, minus the chili, but we do have it quite often in the winter time. And sometimes I'll even make it in the summer. It just depends um, if we're filling it or not, but I absolutely love chili. <laughs> I actually did a poll over on my Instagram post or Instagram page and I did a poll over there. So that was, that was interesting and pretty much all of my followers are like chili too. But anyways, I just wanted to let you all know that this week's What's for Dinner is a very special collab with my friend Veronica from over at Southern Family Life. She is an absolute sweetheart and she is very down to earth. What you see is what you get. She's so genuine. And another thing that we kind of hit it off for or because was she has two boys and so do I and they're both older as well. So we kind of bonded over that. And also I want to throw this in here and I really don't think she'll mind if you will whisper a prayer for her father. Um, he's been in the hospital. He did suffer a stroke. So he is recovering from that. And as well as I think he had a a brain hemorrhage as well. So if you can please just keep him in your prayers and lift him up um, for complete healing, I would greatly appreciate that. And I know she would too. But anyways, we're going to get to cooking, but just make sure you go and show Veronica some love and support. I know you will love her because I do. <laughs> So if you don't know who she is already, please go check her out. I will have all of her information in my description box below. And yeah, just go give her some love and support. But I think we should go get to cooking now, don't you? Come on, let's go. evening we're gonna go ahead well it's actually 12 30 on a Saturday <laughs> but this starts my new what's for dinner week so we are starting out with making some chili so I have always used this chili o seasoning I know in the kitchen with mama Mel she loves it too I have used this for as long as I can remember making chili <laughs> so that is my definite go-to for chili making I will need an onion and then um, I'm going to split this in half because I'm going to make some um, like hamburger beef stroganoff. So I only need half of this because it is the two and a quarter pound. And then I have bushes, the white chili beans. I've got the pintos, of course, but the chili bean flavoring. And then I got kidney beans in the same um, sauce. It's the mild chili sauce on all three of these. And then, of course, I have to throw in a can of black beans. I've got a can of diced tomatoes and some chili ready tomatoes. So I'm going to go ahead and just start off and I'm just going to take y'all through the process and I need to go find my V8 juice because I use that as well and beef broth. So I'll have to go pull that out from the pantry, but that is everything that I use and I'll just kind of walk you through the steps of how I make my chili. So I'll be right back. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take this lid off of, this is my lodge. It's a cast iron, but it's an enamel coated. Um, cast iron Dutch oven. I love this thing when it comes to like soups and stews and all of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that off to the side. So it's, new. it is a six quart. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. So it's a six quart lodge. It's a cast iron enamel and I love it. So that is anytime I make chilies and stuff, um, I tend to drag this out. So <clears throat> in this pot, I just want to go ahead and let that heat up on low. 
If y'all know anything about cast iron, you know you don't have to cook it on very high heat because it's a very good heat conductor. So you don't have to cook on high heat. And the first thing of what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and chop up this onion and put it in the pan and then we'll put the ground beef in and let it all cook together. And then we'll dump everything else in. So you all will see me add stuff in. I'll show you what I'm adding. And then we'll just go from there and I'll set it to music. If I need to tell you all something, I'll jump in here. All right, so I've cut up this whole onion and I'm just gonna add it to the bottom. So it can be cooking. I am going to let these cook down a little bit before I add in, um, sorry, I had to wash my hands. Um, I am going to let these cook down a little bit. My hands are so dry. And then I will add in the hamburger and sorry, I'm moving my cutting board. Um, and let that finish up and then like I said, y'all see me do the rest of it. So. All right, so to these onions real quick, I just want to throw in that I'm going to add some of this Better Than Bouillon. It's a roasted beef base, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there too um, and let that get happy. <laughs> that adds a lot of flavor if y'all have never used that before. It's so good as my thousand dishes just fall behind me. Okay, so I'm going to put the hamburger in because that's been cooking for a little bit. I have a little bit over a pound here. I'm just trying to break it up a little bit, which would be nature seasoning. Not too much because you've got all that chili seasoning and stuff coming too. And some cavenders. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of ground cumin. It helps with the flavor too. I don't know why they put those things on there because it doesn't ever come out for me the right way. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get this cooked up. It already smells good in here. Um, when I get this browned, I'll bring you back here in just a minute. All right, if my camera and my um, <laughs> tripod will cooperate. So sorry about that if you see me moving around. So I have this all browned up. I have the majority of the beef drained or the grease drained, not beef. But anyways, I'm going to leave a little bit in there. I do not rinse my black beans when I make my chili. I just dump the whole can in there. <laughs> Some people might not agree with that, but that's okay. Next are the white chili beans in the chili sauce. Which, oh my God, it smells amazing in my house right now. And then we're going to add in a can of diced tomatoes. Couldn't find the petite, pe, petite. I couldn't find the petite diced, so those will have to do. Next are the kidney beans in the chili sauce. Gotta have the kidney beans. <laughs> Get out of there. And then we're gonna do the pintos. I can get it open. And dump those in. Those are also in the chili sauce, which y'all saw at the beginning of this video. <clears throat> now this is totally my recipe, so please feel free to follow along. This is just how I make it. And then we'll have a can of diced chili ready tomatoes it's got the peppers and stuff in it which I love so when you have all that in is when I go ahead and give this a stir and then like I said I gotta go get my V8 juice so I forgot that okay so before I add the V8 juice and I think I have beef broth but if not I can just add water hang on a second Sorry, Mason was alerting me that somebody was going down our road. <laughs> but I just add in one pack first and get that stirred up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stir this. And I'm gonna go get my V8 juice. I'll be right back. All right, so in goes the V8 juice. It's the Kroger brand vegetable, but it's the same thing. So I just, this is 
half a gallon and I use about half the bottle and then we just drink the rest of it. So in goes that and then you'll want to give it another stir. And then I'm going to let this simmer for a little bit and I'm going to let it see if I need to add the beef broth or if that beef bouillon would be enough. So other than that, I'm going to go ahead and let this simmer for a little bit before I see if I need to add this or just some regular chili powder. So anyways, I will bring y'all back when I am ready to do the taste test and see if I need anything else. So we have been cooking pretty much all day. It is now 4.43. So let's check into it. Look at all that deliciousness. I guess I could have turned the light on, <laughs> but I just had to close the blinds because it was so bright in here. But I'm going to go ahead and fix up some bowls and plate it on up for you all. Tonight on the menu is one pan hamburger beef stroganoff. I think that's how it's labeled. It is not my recipe, but I will have it linked in my description box below. Um, but some of the things you will need is flour, salt, and pepper. This I'm adding because I think it might need something, <laughs> but it's just the roasted beef base. And then you'll need some minced garlic, parsley, and of course the hamburger, this is 80-20. It's um, all I had left in my deep freeze. So, and in case y'all didn't know, if you freeze your hamburger and take it out of the package, it thaws so much more quicker if you freeze it flat in there. So that's how I always do mine. You'll need a container of beef broth, um, a whole onion, some mushrooms, fresh. The recipe called for fresh, but this is all I had. Worcestershire, <laughs> the W sauce, Worcester, 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 Worcestershire. That's how I don't know. However you say it, that sauce right there. <laughs> some sour cream and of course um, some egg noodles. These are the medium, not the large and not the fine. Um, this is what I also had in my stock up in my pantry. So that is just an overview of the ingredients. And now we're gonna go ahead and into cooking. Uh, of course, first step, you just brown your hamburger. So as I cook this, I will bring you all along. All right, so I have my pan here and we're just gonna go ahead and brown up the hamburger in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this and get that in there. This is believe it's a little over a pound it's like a pound and a quarter so it's not it's not too much more but i tell y'all what my tripod will not hold that so my apologies if y'all see it start to turn during the video but um it's still a little bit froze right there but i just laid it out so all right i'm gonna go ahead and Keep browning this up and I'm gonna add in a little bit of Cavenders because Cavenders makes everything better all right so I'm gonna keep browning this up and then I will bring you back um, when we're ready for the next step Shoo. Let's cut those fast <clears throat> so it really gets to me so we're just gonna go ahead and throw in this whole onion and my son's home, so the dogs are gonna bark. <laughs> All right, so this is in here now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue cooking this, and when this is ready, I will bring you back. 
All right, so, like I said, I'm sorry if this view changes, but since that is browned and we've got the majority of the um, grease off, we are going to go ahead and add in two big tablespoons of garlic because y'all know I love me some garlic. We are going to, <coughs> woo, got jacked on something. I'm just gonna stir that garlic around. And I am gonna add in a little bit of this beef bouillon, the beef base, just about maybe a teaspoon and stir that in and I'll bring you right back. So we have that and now we're adding in the mushrooms. Oh, don't throw the can lid in there. It's a little good. All right, so this part is going to be a voiceover as you hear. Um, because I think my mom had called or all the kids came into the kitchen. No, all the kids came into the kitchen. So at this point I had already added the flour to as the thickener and I had stirred that up and cooked it for a little bit to get that flour taste out. And then I emptied out a whole container um, of beef broth. But like I said, I'll have the original recipe linked down below. And by the way, thanks again, Amy at the Blonde Cook for suggesting or sharing your wonderful and delicious recipe for this so <laughs> it's definitely a family favorite but anyways we just stirred this around and let it thicken up and right before i put the lid on it to let it finish cooking you want to add in some worcestershire sauce <laughs> to give it a little bit of a zip and then you stir that around again and then you just kind of want to let it sit there and simmer until it thickens a little bit not too much because right here you got to add in your egg noodles I use the medium egg noodles because that is what I had on hand at this time and you will have enough broth trust me on this it doesn't look like enough but egg noodles don't take very much to cook so you just make sure you get them stirred up really well to where everything is coated and then all I did was just put the lid on and let it finish simmering so those noodles could cook down. I did check it periodically though because I didn't want anything sticking to the bottom um, but this was so so good. I don't know I had regular beef stroganoff but this one uses hamburger so uh, maybe that was the difference but it was really good. So, after that has simmered, what you'll want to do is get your sour cream um, and just go ahead and mix that in to this beef mixture and that's what gives it the creamy texture, of course. Oh, this was so good. It's definitely one of our favorites now, so I know I'll be making it more. <laughs> Um, my youngest one absolutely loved it, but next time I probably <laughs> will use fresh mushrooms instead of canned. I think it might just give it a better flavor. I'll probably go for portobello mushrooms, I would say, because they have a more meatier texture. But anywho, for the sides this night, I just took a can of my favorite green beans, and then I had a can of whole potatoes in my pantry stock, so I grabbed one of those and just sliced them up. I let those get warm and then I also made some crescent rolls to go with it. But here's everything after it has um, cooked down and got all happy together. <laughs> These beans are so good. If y'all have not tried those Margaret Home green beans, please, please do. They are so yummy. But here is that delicious and creamy beef stroganoff. So if you're looking for a quick and easy one, like I said, I will have her recipe linked below for this deliciousness pot of yumminess. <laughs> and anyways, I'm going to go ahead and plate that up. But thanks for watching this recipe and please give it a try because it is awesome.
Okay, so for dinner this evening, we are going to have a three packet pot roast. And yes, I said this evening because it is 6.15 a.m. I'm gonna put this in the crock pot before I leave. So the only things you'll need is a good size chuck roast, depending on your family size, some butter, a whole onion, and I use a whole bag of these petite gold tomatoes. You'll need a packet of Italian dressing, ranch dressing, and brown gravy mix. And then all you'll need in here is just um, a cup of water, and that is absolutely it. The recipe for this is in my Saffron um, app recipe book. So I'll have that linked below, and the original video of where I show all the steps will also be linked below. But I'm just gonna set you up in the tripod and let you watch me. Right, so I am home after a very long Monday at work <laughs> but anyways the roast has been put on warm as soon as it times out it goes to warm but anyways there's the potatoes and the roast is underneath there somewhere okay. anyways I'm just gonna heat up some green beans and then I'll bring you back when I get it all plated up okay right, so I'm bringing you back a little bit earlier <laughs> but I do have my green beans going here and then I'm going to toast up this bread I had a couple hot dog buns left over I needed to use so they don't go bad but I'm just gonna throw this in the oven and toast it. And when I get it plated up, you'll see the finished cup. So I just got home from work. It's about 5.20 in the evening on Tuesday. <laughs> so this evening we're going to fix some salmon fillets. And I'm going to use this um, one sheet pan glazed salmon and vegetables. It's got garlic, soy, and miso. I think it would be pretty good. But I'm going to cook the salmon on one because these vegetables are going to take longer to cook than the... Um, salmon is so I'm gonna cook it on two different I know it says one but this is just me being nitpicky <laughs> and just because salmon don't take very long to cook at all so um, that's what we're gonna do I guess I could cut it into smaller pieces but I don't know but 
that's all that you need on there so it's not going to be hard and they're only cooking bell pepper and asparagus so those potatoes sweet potatoes i mean to us this is like the perfect combination but um asparagus don't look too good right there it's all right i gotta cut almost all that off anyways um but i'm gonna go ahead and peel and dice these up i'm then gonna go ahead and dice up the asparagus and i'll get the salmon all laid out and then cover it in this and when i get all of that done i will bring you back and show you what it looks like before i put it in the oven all right, so I fibbed a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. Um, um, a trick for asparagus is, if, I'm sure y'all might know this, but if you take the whole stalk and you hold your end like where the flower pieces stop, like right here, and then you hold it by the stem, wherever it snaps at is the best part to eat. It's not fibrous or stringy. So that's what I've done. I went ahead and snapped all of those off, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those into like inch size pieces in this bowl. And then the same for the sweet potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I peel them and wash them. And then I'm going to dice them into like bite-sized pieces. That way they'll cook quicker on the sheet pan. Um, because the salmon's only going to take about 8 to 10 minutes. So it will not take very long at all. But I'm going to go ahead and snap all these or cut them up however I want to do it. And put them in my bowl. And then I'm going to wash and peel them. And I'm going to cut those up too. So I figured I would just show y'all and we can speed it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I have the salmon ready and the only thing I put on the salmon was some olive oil and the seasoning packet. I have that sheet pan ready and then I have the asparagus and the sweet potatoes and they're also in that same seasoning with some olive oil. So this is getting ready to go in the oven and when I get it all done I will bring you back and show you the finished results. So this evening, really quick and easy, simple dinner. We're just having hot dogs and tater tots. And I did end up making some coleslaw, so I will see if I can find a recipe to link below that's as close to mine as I can. Um, but it's just basic sugar, salt, or sugar, vinegar, mayonnaise, and a little bit of seasoning. So that's all I put in mine. But my stove has a griddle here on this middle section. I think this is probably the first time that I've used it on camera. <laughs> so, but anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and cook these hot dogs one up in it till they get a nice and golden brown color. I do like a little bit like that because it reminds me of cooking them on a campfire. Um, if you like boiled hot dogs, that's fine. We just don't prefer them over here. So this is how I cook them up. And... I'm just going to go ahead and get that one done. And then while these were cooking, that's when I went ahead and made all the sides. But this is my husband's plate, and he likes just chili and slaw on his. And they were absolutely delicious, but um, I load my hot dogs up. So let me know in the comments below what you all prefer on your hot dogs. But I really want to thank you all for coming back for another What's for Dinner. And make sure you go and give Veronica some love and support. I know y'all will love her. 
But until next time, God bless. Bye, y'all.